Hey folks, this is your old pal, Uncle Al, and this, I think it's a half hour, we're going to talk about food from a book. Now, I hopefully, I'm in the dimension, I hope this is the right dimension. Okay, I gotta make sure, folks. I think it's Labor Day, it's probably the 5th of Labor Day, or the 6th, or it could be the 7th. I think it's the 7th of Labor Day, uh, I mean, of uh, September. I hope Donald Trump is still in office. Uh, yeah, there was a big screw up this year. So far, uh, the disease has slowed down. Uh, they, they tell people you can take the vax if you're 18 to 50 in good shape. And uh, they have a 40 to 60% chance, which was very good Pfizer. The rest of the companies are now getting arrested because some of their vac, vax protein-based elements, RDNA, okay, um, they were using offshore companies to generate this uh, blood protein and I guess insect gigs. A lot of people were screaming on Fox and CNN, CNN especially, screaming cockroach eggs, cockroach eggs. And Fox was either saying bug, insect eggs, or pig's blood, which did not cheer up a lot of Muslims who took Madura. And I think another, I think it's European facts, they weren't too happy about it. No. <laughs> Sorry, half the Muslims of the world got pig blood in them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope this is the um, universe where Biden lost the election and we didn't have a, uh, some kind of incident at the state cap, at the national cap capital. Uh, Trump went over there, stood in front of the the um, Congress and told everybody to go home. So it was very quiet, very nice. Everybody left, and he told them he'll talk to the people in Congress. And everybody left. It was one of the most boringest July 6th. I thought they were going to riot. But anyway, um, I'm going to turn on some lights and see what's going on. Uh, yes. Um, U.S. Is, uh, economy is booming because they stopped all shipments from China and they're going hog wild. Everybody's trying to catch up. Uh, food production is back on board. Everything across the board, they are really chasing a lot of Democrats and Republicans who sold out to the Chinese. Uh, we're having a lot of midterm elections. They are chasing, uh, they're still, the FBI is still looking for AOC and the four, four the cop one. She was trying to cross the border to uh, Ontario stand or something like that. Uh, right now, India and Japan, and I think Taiwan's invading um, China and Hong Kong after they found the horrible bodies of the protesters last year screaming and asking for help out of those prisons, they went full board. And I think all of a sudden China and a few other regions are marching towards Beijing and Beijing is threatening to uh, use nuclear weapons. And what's the funny part is uh, Russia is now part of NATO and they successfully settled the disputes in what you call it, Ukraine, they found out that Biden, Ukraine, and China was in this collusion together to screw up, cut Russia in half. Now, Russia's cutting Afghanistan in half. Uh, um, everything's fine in one part of northern Afghanistan. The southern part uh, got really bad. Uh, there's been constant uh, terrorist attacks. Southern and also Pakistani army helping them out. 
uh, we lost a lot of people during we we thought Pakistan was the higher ally. All of a sudden, we get shot, and we're airlifting people out of the uh, uh, what you call in Japan, and in there, uh, I think uh, August first, and help rescue Americans, and, and Trump went full ballistic on Pakistan. I swear, so half of Afghanistan is part of Pakistan, the Pashtun re re regime or something like that. I don't know. I gotta check my coordinates. It should say I should be in what dimension? Ah, oh, crap. And it's the wrong dimension. Never mind. Okay, let's get this all fixed up. Now, at least it's the same time in this dimension as the other dimension. Ten minutes to one. Great. Okay, I gotta check on a few things. Be right back. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Great. I'm in the Biden dimension. Who votes two idiots in this dimension? Captain Crazy and co-captain Crazy. I swear... Fez is getting bent out of shape. Let's see. Ah, damn it. Ah. Getting old. Okay. Hey, back to normal. Okay, folks, that was a skit. This is not dealing with alternate realities. You are dreaming. You are going back to sleep. Everything's a dream. Okay. Hi. It's your old pal, Uncle Al. And we're going to talk about, this is a video for Tommy's. Homestead Gardens and Preps with Mama Bear Stripping. Now a lot of you should have this book. Okay. Now if you look at it, he survived the economic collapse in Argentina in 2001. And I lost my bookmark. Great. Okay, now we're going from the book. We're reading Fidel's, Charles Aguirre, Fernand, Fernando. Sorry, my Spanish is bad. He has two YouTube channels, one in Spanish and one is The Modern Survivalist. So please go check him out. And we're reading from his book. I did put a bookmark. Okay. Uh, stage one, deficiency nutrition. Three degrees in, of malnutrition. Uh, if you see anybody on keto, that's stage one of malnutrition. Uh, stage two, 20%, you lost weight. Uh, you might get quashed in that stage. That's stage two. Uh, you eat little food and as it has little food value. You're mostly eating breads and pasta. Pasta is um, most common, rice and pasta is the most common food source for people in economic collapse. That's all the poor people out there. So you see hundreds of recipe on, God, I don't want to even think about it. Okay, but it lacks protein, calcium, 
and iron and certain needed fats for the body. Okay? From this stage, it's relatively easy to heal the patient. You feed them beef and you feed them a lot of garden vegetables. Stage three, in most cases, most child will be malnutrition. malnutrition. Uh, this is due to the mother fairly um, feeding herself poorly. That's why we have WIT programs. And um, uh, what you call it? The child has neurological disorders, probably colosh, that skinny arms and a big gut. Okay, and that goes for the moms. You seen it in the old, like 70s and 80s, ads feed the children. That's kawash, folks. And uh, a child from from newborn to 12 is always hungry and crying, and sooner or later, he dies. And uh, at this time, um, the parents are frantic and they're asking food to feed their kids. Usually they'll find food. Quit buying junk food. Half these videos I see on people prepping, all those prepper channels, are buying junk food. Quit that. Okay? Now, what you want to store. Okay? First, you go over to Goodwill or Salvation Army. And this is Smart Girl in New York because you live in an apartment. This also deals with people in apartment buildings. This is important. I just put out another video on my on the pledge of allegiance and chats. Go watch that right now. Need more chemicals. One second. Uh. Yeah, that'll work. First thing you get is some kind of powdered drink to flavor your water, okay? If you're really poor, the best one is Tang Orange Drink, all right? Uh, this one is, uh, what you call it? Six, it used to be ten, now it's six of the singles to go. You know, buy it in jars, buy it in whatever convenient form you can get but buy a powder drink mix tang is available and it's fairly cheap still tuna in can or tin foil buy it a lot i do recommend for those people who don't shop tuna because i do the quality tuna and american tuna american tuna sucks because I buy European or Asian or the best is Japanese and the other one is from France. And talk about expensive tuna. Okay? Because they're not like, oh, it's cat food. No, that's tuna. Yeah. I buy the expensive one from France, packed in olive oil, and it looks like a tuna steak that's in a circle. It's cut. You can see the flakes. It's a perfect cut. You open up a typical American, oh dear Lord, it's cat food. Okay, they process everything so it fits in a little can. And it's in kind of floaty flakes and God knows what. And they said, spring water. Spring water, you have a little difference on it, okay? It's good if you want long-term storage, it doesn't go rancid. Olive oil, bad olive oil, will go rancid. Good olive oil improves the flavor of the tuna as it gets older. Bad olive oil, oh. Okay? So it's either can or tin foil, you know, foil packets, of tuna. American and tin foil tuna, American version, only good up to about a year to two years, depending who makes it. Okay? So you want to get tuna. That's a cheap, high source of protein. Rice. Okay, I keep telling this to people. Know your rices. Okay? A lot of people, you can store brown rice. I'm going out. Dear. 
No, you can't. All right? Because it causes rot, black rot, and in rot. E R O N, I think, in rot. Yeah, in rot. And you see people tripping around or vomiting. Okay, so don't store brown rice. Next one is an Asian rice. It depends. All right, some people store jasmine rice. There's nothing wrong with jasmine rice. Some people store sticky rice, like Asian and Chinese people and Thai. Not a problem, okay? There is no such thing as coconut rice because who we who cook knows what it is. We put in coconut milk when we steam it, okay? Coconut milk evaporates, steam, so you get that fragment, fragrant, or coconut water, fragrant coconut taste inside the rice. All right? Not rocket science, folks. Easy. Most Americans, I tell, get them the long grain rice. It's not hard, not rocket science, because there's several other brands of rices. And wild rice is not a real rice. It's a grassy cup. Okay, it's a grass seed. So know your rices. If you're watching these prepper channels and they say anything other than long grain rice, you could store it for a year. A lot of you don't understand sto uh, storage properly. If you keep it in a cool, dark place, vacuum plastic packed, it'll last you five years. But if you goof up any point of those steps, you have garbage. And I rescued a lot of people. I told them, get the grinder out that I showed you to put up and set up. And we're going to make rice flour. Okay? Your calorie count doesn't change. However, the edibility of the rice will. Because rice will dry out if it's not contained in that environment. Okay? That's why you change it every year or every two years. For Asian sticky rice. For long grain rice, you could go a little longer, but you got to monitor the consistency of the rice. Okay? When you cook the rice and half of it is still hard, it's time to go into the grinder to make rice flour. Okay? You can make sweet cakes. You make sweet breads out of it. Not a problem. And it does mix well with other flours. But that's my level of cooking. Your level of cooking is, how do I open this can of peanut butter? It's a jar of peanut butter. It's not canned. And if you want to see a disaster, go see Huffle's cat store away for five years peanut butter. Peanut butter is only good for one year or maybe two years if kept properly. Okay. And we covered tang or powdered fruit drink. We covered tuna. We covered rice. So far, so good. Never get old, folks. Okay. Okay, next thing on this. Yeah. Next thing on this is dehydrated mashed potatoes. Now I've seen a lot of prepping channels and I keep looking at them like, okay, I showed that for my simple suitcase that you buy over at Goodwill. These little pouches, of, it makes four cups of instant mashed potatoes. And I keep looking at them, they're not real survivalists. Real Survivalist goes to the restaurant supply center. I showed them my wholesale list, wholesaler's license. I tell them I'm a, with a church group and I order 50 pound bags of dehydrated mashed potatoes, unflavored. You don't want to get the butter flavor because it contains a hydronated um, food molecule to insulate. It's a long word, 
and I'm tired. It's almost 105 in the morning. Okay? Uh, it has hydrogenated oil to make it butter flavor. I ordered plain without. It lasts longer. It lasts up to 50 years once you repack it into number 10 cans with nitrogen. Because I used to work at a uh, Mormon food center where they show you how to can everything in number 10 cans and later into the bags. Helped them out, learned a lot of stuff. You should take one of their courses. Okay, but I got 50 pound bag of dehydrated mashed potatoes from the restaurant supply. Now, right now they're having shortages and it looks really bad, folks. You should have prepped before September the 1st. And don't give me that excuse. I can prep forever. I'm a unicorn prepper. I have no idea what reality is. Well, reality is going to kick you in the testicles. All right. So you got that. And it's, it's great because used it in Air Force mess, used it in supply, used it in church supply. And you divide it up and you put it in mylar bags and we make our own, uh, what you call it, printed contact list that we glue onto the mylar bags that we give people in the fall for our food bank distribution. Not rocket science, folks. If I could do it, my church group would do it, buy the 50 pound bag of dehydrated mashed potatoes. It's not rocket science. Okay, it's easy. Even dad on YouTube could do this. Go over to the restaurant supply, pick up a 50 pound bag of dehydrated potatoes. Put in Marlar bags. And don't use the gallon bags, son. Use the quart bags. Lord. Okay. Pizza mix. Now there's several pizza mix. It just makes the flat bread. And sometimes you get a can of sauce and a can of cheese. Easy to do. Why do the the pizza sauce? Um, it stores fairly cheap. It looks like any other pizza product. You might get it in the boxes, or you can get the pizza mix. Again, Uncle Alan did a lot of jobs. Like you go to Cisco or Siscon, or is it Cisco? Well, they're having distribution problems, but I know a lot of people work there. So you get the pizza mix. It's basically a mixed dough that they put stuff in it and makes pizzas for the big restaurant chains. Now, I see me and Mike's closed because they can't get the pizza mix to mix fresh batches of dough. Okay. All you need is add water, tomato sauce, and cheese. But for the dough, you add a little bit of oil. And you add a little bit of yeast and some salt and let it go. Not rocket science, folks. Even Palmetto Papier makes his own pizza dough. It's not hard. But what I like about the pizza mixes in the boxes with the canned cheese and the can of tomato sauce or boboli. Um, I prefer the can in the boxes because they store better and it's cheap. The boboli is okay if you freeze it. It's fine. It'll last you six months. But it gets tiring if you're eating pizza every day. Okay? Another good buy that I always tell, and you hit the restaurant supply, or you could hit right now, you go quietly into your store while everybody's panic biking, buying beans like a hillbilly. You buy lentils. Okay? Easy. I have to bring up another book. Okay, this is by Esther Dickey. Read that very carefully. Very simple. It's not rocket science. Okay, lentils. WD Rock and Roll. I know, I've seen the, the tuna. Tuna, if you want to get rid of the smell, add an acid or a base to it. You could use lemon juice, you could use olive oil, you could use tomatoes. Anything to kill the tuna taste. All right. I make pasta with it. I use soy sauce and other things 
and I make tuna rice, which is a very popular dish, but you're not at my cooking level. Okay? My level is about sous chef. Your level is, well, I got a can of tomato sauce, and I got some tuna. Let's see what I can make. No. Okay? So anyway, you got the lentils. Another trick I teach people, you could take long grain rice because Wayne of the Ungrateful Peasant did it. You could put in a work thermos or boiling hot water, drain it, put more boiling hot water after you put um, equal amounts of rice and lentils in a stock cube into it, pour in the boiling water, and then let the steam go out a little bit, and then cap it tight and wrap it in cloth or a towel, or a down jacket. The internal heat of the bottle will keep the food cooking. And at the end of the day, you open up, shake everything out, and you have rice and lentils. Very good. It had flavor by the stock. You could add butter, lard, a few vegetables to it, and you have a meal. All right? The lentils supplies the protein. The rice supplies the carbohydrates. The lard, butter, or olive oil supplies the fats and oils, and the fresh vegetables or foraged vegetables provide the other nutrients. So you don't starve. Don't eat just only beans and rice. Know how to cook. And you can watch that video on the Ungrateful Peasants channel. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. Okay, pasta. Now, I warn people, if you're going to do pasta, you have to know how to cook it. Because Uncle Alan's getting mad. <coughs> I've seen all these purple channel. <coughs> Put it with the macaroni. There's different forms of pasta. All right? Know how to cook pasta. Quit buying macaroni. It is not the one all for everything. All right, I'm getting sick and tired because my idiot nephew bought, I bought a half a tin of pasta, Uncle Al. And you went to Yale. You're 43 years old and you're telling me that you bought a half a ton of pasta. Well, I'll pay you and take half and deliver it to my church, my church group, or our food bank. The other half, you owe me money. I don't like macaroni. I'm kind of sick of macaroni. I'll eat potato salad, celery salad at any picnic, but I refuse to eat macaroni salad. Okay, because right now Uncle Alan got a half a ton or a quarter of a ton and I'm still eating macaroni and I'm sharing it to 13 disabled people and they're getting sick of macaroni. Okay, there are other forms uh, pasta, all right? Big thing when you cook pasta, and we're going to talk this in just a second, make sure your tomato sauce does not have corn syrup. This does not. And I buy, I'll explain why I buy this one. Okay? Uh, many children lived on it for years. Spaghetti is a good example. Once you add meatballs to it and more vegetables, uh, you make it Neapolitan, like in Japan, they did not have tomato sauce, so they use ketchup. And they'll slice a pot dog, and they'll have green peppers, bacon, onions, I forgot the other thing they have in there, and they call it a Neapolitan. It's a favorite kid dish because it's sweet from the ketchup. So you got plenty of carbohydrates, you got plenty of vegetables, you have fr proteins from the hot dogs. This was very popular after the war during occupation in Japan and until the 50s. Even now, it's a very popular dish. It's easy to make. Ingredients are cheap because this was the time where after World War II until 1943, Japan was starving. And I always tell everybody who's a calorie counter or anti-carb counter, well, we can't eat bread. Uh... uh you know, Rome was built on bread, and we're facing a great wheat shortage. I didn't know that. We can eat other stuff, dude. 
And I'm looking at them like, you have no skills in home ec. You don't understand nutrition. You're not a cook. You're just some guy at a grill flipping hot dogs and tri-tip. Okay? I know what I'm talking about. Because cooking is one of my passions. And I study every form of it. So when I hear some dumbbell telling me I can make different pastas, that's true. And also I hate macaroni. But you have to combine it with other ingredients. You cannot serve kids, teenagers, old people buttered pasta. Okay, I chewed out my church leader. They can't cook a damn, but they can have great sex with Uncle Al. Okay, I chewed their butts out. But literally, and well, I did that this after dinner, so that's why I wasn't on Courtney's late night, this channel. I had to come home, take a shower, walk over to my other church lady, and well, I have to go back over to her house. She didn't know I le left, and I have to cook breakfast for her kids because she's a lousy cook. And Uncle Alan's back hurts, and my ribs, and I don't know. Because Uncle Alan had a really good Labor Day Sunday. So, <laughs> on all you, like, I'm macho, I exercise. Why can't I get any women? Because you're dumbass. Okay? So anyway, we're talking about dry pasta. You should have some. You can buy it right now while it's still cheap. But coming this fall and next spring, you will not see pasta on the shelves. They will be all gone. So stop buying tackies for the kids. Buy pasta. And buy assortment of pasta. Not macaroni. And we're talking about mac and cheese. Or just cheesy mac in Britain. Or the macaroni and cheese. Okay. Fine, that's not a problem with me. But understand this, always throw in peas, carrots, or chopped onions, and they won't realize it, sometimes chop ham. The good kind, not the cheapo one. Okay, next one is tomato sauce. Okay. Okay. Now, Unflavored, unsweetened tomato sauce will last a long time because it's a high acidic value. Now, why I pack a lot of these in small cans? Because tomato sauce deteriorates in one year. I do have number 10 cans at the church uh, food bank because we do cooking and I need number 10 cans that feed anywhere from 200, 300 people, and I know how to do it. And I know how to measure out tomato sauce out of number 10 cans. Also, I'm a rebel canner. I know how to recan this in pint jars by adding a few herbs and onions and some garlic and make my own whatever sauce I need from regular tomato sauce from number 10 can. You have to understand the ball book. Read it back and forth, not a problem. The problem is people get sloppy. Okay, watch Mouse Toes channel. Okay, and if your tomato sauce is too sweet, do not add corn syrup. Add a little natural sugar or salvia. All right, and let's see. If you have a freezer and it's set up good and has a sandstone, um, what you call bottom to it that I modified on my freezers because I seen Anthony's video on it. Go see that video. It's a natural a moisture absorber and coolant. It absorbs cold and keeps it for a long time. If your power goes out, everything in the freezer, if it's below zero in your freezer, the sandstone stays at zero. And it's not like those ice packs, the blue one, the your uh, eco ones, all you need is a piece of sandstone on the bottom. And this is an industrial freezer. Now, I won't tell you location, because all you are dumbasses, 
And I don't want starving people raid my frozen meats and frozen burritos. I have sectioned off. If you go see Abby's Life on the Farm, yes, hers sectioned off beautifully. What I do recommend is get wire baskets or plastic baskets that are freeze resistant. So you can pull out the basket, look around, see what you got, put it back in. It's easy. It's not rocket science, folks. So you got your frozen meat. You have a certain selection of canned meat, which is good. But here in America, we're kind of stupid. We don't have canned hot dogs. That would be in a big investment in the next few years. Okay, so I freeze everything in the freezer. Uh, meat, I got venison, I got steaks, I got eco batteries. I do have a lot of them. And also, I do have a generator. I have a plug like WD Block and Roll with a control panel and stuff that would put power back into the house. So I have my uh, outside refrigerator freezer, my inside refrigerator freezer, my place where I, I can't tell you, my heavy duty freezers. I have a power outlet for the outside light. WD Glock and Roll. Go check out his video. And I'll explain about that. It's a very good video, folks. You should watch it. Okay. Now. Dulce Leche. It's like condensed milk, but thicker. And this is condensed milk. The North used it to win against the South. Full energy. You add it in your coffee. You add it in your oatmeal. It's like, you know, it's almost caramel. Almost. This is thick. Evaporated milk is just evaporated milk. But um, sweetened condensed milk is the Americana way. Okay. Now, if you read any military history, this was very popular and goes all the way up to present day. But nobody ever reads books or read true history. That's why Guam gets mad. Okay. Ah, that hurt. And this is from the book. Okay. 20 year old book. Dulce de Lecha. Now, if Liberty Garden wants to do a video, or don't want to show his face, he could hold up a can, explain five minutes about it. Now, what do you do that? It's basically milk caramel. Uh, I could do candy making with it, and I will do it in the future. Okay, you can put it on cereal. You can put it on uh, crackers or boil, boil condensed milk. You add a little hot water, and you put it right over oatmeal. For most Americans, it's a bit too sweet, but if you're from South America or Central America or Japan, it's a, in a lot of drinks. It's in a lot of breakfast food. It's a lot of dessert products. Especially fruit. Yeah. Okay. But if you know what you're doing, it turns something and it boosts up the carbohydrate rate and calorie rate. So you will survive. So those two items, the condensed milk and the uh, dulce de leche. Okay. My Spanish is bad. All right. Now, next two are as important. Flour. Flour goes rancid, so you better pack it right. Okay? You have to understand flour. Flour is ground wheat. Wheat is in major short supply throughout the world because of the climate change. Yes, there is a climate change. No, it's not only carbon dioxide. It's methane, you idiots. I gotta yell at people. It's like, it's carbon dioxide. Fine. Methane we can't get rid of unless we burn it. And it causes more carbon dioxide. Unless we liquefy it. You can't compress it like down underneath in the ocean. We need a lot of ton pressure. Okay? Still people don't understand what Uncle Alan is talking about. My level intellect, your level. Well, it's right there. Okay, so flour, you could keep it up to the year or more, depending how you keep it. 
And if you know when it goes rancid, you see these little bugs in it and the crawling around thing. Wahoo! Okay? You don't want that. Another one is maize. Now, maize has been used for years. I go to the same su restaurant supply chain. They supply to restaurant, Mexican restaurants. I could get 25, 50 pound bags. Once I almost got a 100 pound bag of maize. Okay? Restaurant supply chains. Okay, that's something to remember. You can make tortillas. You can make corn, uh, corn flour bread. You can make a hundred different things out of it. All right. If you know Mexican or Spanish cooking, this is very popular. Wheat, I mean, wheat-based flours, you have to understand. That's why I always store wheat berry. I have a storage unit that's temperature control. I have 55-gallon drums of metal bins. Metal drums with the band, and I have big ass mylar bags, and I seal all the way to the product. It ain't goat food, folks, so I know what I'm doing. I got 40 years of skill versus you guys, like, I'm doing a prepping channel. I'm going to be self sufficient. I'm a homesteader prepper. Dude. This is why I'm calling an old mean survivalist. I'm a git. Okay, let us continue. Okay. And that covers that. And then you have, remember, have enough salt, sugar, tea, yeast, coffee, and chocolate. Because they're going to be in short supply. Now, after... SHTF crew were in the early parts of it. How to cook after a, 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 a bleh. Okay. You can do um, barbecues. You can invite your friends once a week. Good association. Um, boiling water, simple. Put it in a small pot. You have thermoses, I hope. It, okay. But that's basic stuff. I know I went a little overboard. But you should all have thermoses, and you get, should have a portable personal thermos and a wide mouth big thermos for Big Stanley for cooking. Not hard, not rocket science, easy as pie. Okay? Before I end this, be sure you get the books that I mentioned. 20 years ago, he wrote this. And that's Fernando, Fer, Fernando right there. Esther Dickey updated this book. This is new form. Esther Dickey. I'm glad I was tired. So understand this. We are no longer prepping after September the 1st. This is a survival run. This is just basic stuff. Me, I'll have another three jars of peanut butter. And at the church uh, food supply, I always request everybody to no donate peanut butter. And I always have it tagged and listed and what day I got and how old this thing is. Can't see it. Never have eye surgery. Can't see anything now. It, well, it's on here someplace. Can't, just can't see it. Okay, this is good until July, uh, July 17, 2022. So it lasts about a year. Do not do like Hubble Scott. I'll store peanut butter in a cardboard box in the, inside my attic. There! Don't do that. Okay? So that's the easy part. And I will put out other lists. I did one uh, for... 30 day for WD lock and roll to explain what's going on. All right. Make sure you're going to eat those foods. And to prove it, because I can't show all of it, because $107 and I know how to shop. And that goes for one couple. All right. Now, I got to get cleaned up 
and go sneak back over to the church lady's house because I told her I'll be back. So I'll be over there. Kids are going to wake up before they go to school. They're going to have French toast. She has one teenage daughter and acting weird. Every time, Uncle Alan's here, yay! And then she's dressed up like a slut. Normally she's in sweatpants and an oversized shirt. And it's like, yeah, I'm spending the night. Dress normally. Don't, don't be a slut. I'm here with your mom. Close your doors. You know, I don't want this weird thing. You know, I have a good time as long as she doesn't cook. I swear to God, butter noodles? Who feeds old people butter noodles three times a week? Okay, I'm going to make breakfast. I'm going to have a nice time with her, make breakfast for the kids because they're happy because they get a hot breakfast. If they get, don't wake up early enough, they get a hot breakfast to go on to the bus and eat it. And we're going to have French toast sticks and breakfast burritos. They're really happy because the kids on the bus say, what the hell is that wonderful smell? Uncle Al spent the night over at Mom's. Well, he spent the night with Mom. And he made us breakfast. A wonderful breakfast. Because they'll look into their the kids' breakfast bag. I told them, if any of those kids give you trouble, you tell Uncle Al. I'll make them disappear. And uh, they're all jealous because... The one little one, he really enjoys my French toast sticks because I know he likes chopped ham with the cheese. And I don't use that cheap orange cheese from my cheese selections from the dairy. And it's a natural cheddar with chopped smoked ham from my larder. And people look at me, what's a larder? And I'm going like, God, these people can't cook. Okay, folks, I took up most of your time. It's almost an hour. I'll catch you later. I got to sneak back. See you later, folks. You have a nice rest of the Labor Day, I guess. Bye.